A very good day I dedicate to everyone who's watching this video. I hope all of you is doing great over there, no matter where you are right now, yeah? Welcome back to our online lecture class for this week. So class, we have come to week 10 of the semester. Today, we are going to learn about the public auditing topic. If you still remember, during our earlier week of lecture, I have reminded you all that auditing always comes after accounting. Since we have learned about the public accounting last week, this week should be followed by the public auditing topic. Okay, let's start our lesson now. Alright, first thing first, uh, based on syllabus content, we are going to look at the definition of the public auditing itself. Okay, I have always talked about this, yeah, before you proceed. To understand deeply about a certain topic, you need to really understand what is the definition or the meaning of the term itself, yeah? So, first, we are going to look what is exactly public auditing definition and followed by the objectives of auditing. And then the categories of audit, types of audit, role of the auditor general or AG, annual report of the auditor general, role of public account committee, followed by the audit act in 1957. So this audit act uh, in 1957 was being amended in 1978. Yeah. So uh, basically we have four parts of syllabus here the first part is of course about uh, public auditing the general the general part of it means the definition the objectives the categories in which it involves the internal and also external auditing and then the types of audit we will look at three types of audit later okay so this is the first uh, the first um, part of the syllabus and then the second part is uh, regarding on the role of the Auditor General and also annual report of the Auditor General. So everything is related to the Auditor General, yeah? This is the second part. And then the third part is the role of Public Account Committee. The fourth part is about the Act itself uh, based on the federal constitution of the country, okay? So we have four important parts in public auditing. Please remember that, yeah? Alright class, we move on to the content of the lesson itself. Okay, the definition of public auditing. Audit serves an accountability relationship. It is independent, objective assessment of the fairness of management's representations on performance or the assessment of management's systems and practices against criteria reported to a governing body or others with similar responsibilities. So this is defined by Canadian Comprehensive Audit Foundation in 1994, page 11. Auditing also involves evaluation and verification processes performed by a competent and qualified individual to ensure the validity and reliability of information in certain organizations' activities and our accordance with established standards and procedures. So if you can see here, I have always uh, been reminding you all about this as well. Uh, when you define a term, uh, something that you need to understand deeply, you need to find certain keywords. Yeah. So for public auditing or auditing, there are certain keywords that you can try to memorize, okay? For auditing, it involves evaluation and verification processes. So, these two are the most important part of the term, okay? So, you can take evaluation and also verification processes as the keywords for the term itself, okay? So, every time you talk about Auditing, you know that auditing always involves the evaluation and also verification processes. Okay, uh, besides that, it is in accordance with established standards and procedures. So everything that we do, we need to know that there is always a set of rules or uh, a standard that we should follow um, in terms of evaluating 
it okay okay uh, based on the evaluation itself we will compare whether it is following the established standards or the procedures procedure procedures that already being set earlier on okay so over here you can take out in accordance with established standards and procedures as your keyword another keyword so auditing means uh, the evaluation and verification processes uh, that is in accordance with established standards and procedures okay clear yeah okay the next meaning um, from the definition itself as well audit is also mainly associated with the evaluation and verification of financial systems and records here you go you can see right um, the another definition is also involves the keyword of evaluation and also verification okay it's clear yeah okay next one we move on to the objectives of government audit so there are nine objectives in total okay the first one to make sure that the expenditure is incurred out of the fund which the competent authority has sanctioned second to verify that the expenditure of the government department is sanctioned as per the rules and regulations of the department concerned. Thirdly, to see that the expenditure already sanctioned has been incurred by an office officer who is authorized to do so. Okay. Fourthly, to ensure that the payments have been made to the right persons and they are duly entered in the books on the basis of receipts received from them. Fifthly, to see that the payments have been properly classified into capital and also revenue. Okay. Sixthly, to check the existence of stock and stores and their proper valuation. Number seven, to ensure that expenditures have been incurred in the interest of public. Number eight, to ensure that stock taking is done periodically and stock registers are maintained up to date. This is very important, yeah? And then last but not least, to ensure that whether money due from others has been regularly recovered while verifying the receipts. Next one, we move on to the categories of audit. So there are two types of categories of public auditing, yeah? First one is the internal audit, second is external audit, so internal and external. So what is internal audit? It is the power and responsibilities are under the administration of the head of individual government organization. Meanwhile, for external audit, the function is performed by the National Audit Department or NAD in which the power, authority, and responsibilities of the Auditor General or AG are specifically vested in the Articles 106 and 107 of Federal Constitution and Audit Act in 1957. So internal audit, it involves the power and responsibility by the head of individual government in an organization. So that means... Um, it is within the department itself, yeah, within the individual organi within the individual government organization. So it only involves people within the government organization, yeah, the head of the individual government organization. Meanwhile, for external audit, as you can see here, the, the one that in charge is the auditor general or the AG, yeah, because it is specifically vested also in the article 106 and 107 of federal constitution just remember it like this for internal audit it is in charge it is in charge by head of individual government organization meanwhile for external audit it is in charge by auditor general or ag okay so that's the difference the the main difference of the categories of audit so what are the functions of internal audit unit okay 
So, internal audit carried out by a subunit of a public sector organization is often known as internal audit unit. Okay, so we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. We have 9 functions over here. Okay, the first one is to study the reliability and effectiveness of financial and internal controls. Secondly, to review the level of compliance with policies laws, regulations, and also directives. And then thirdly, to review the organization's activities are managed in a prudent, efficient, and effective. Fourthly, to review the organization's assets and interests are safeguard against loss, fraud, and abuse. Next one, number five. Give advice and opinion in internal control systems, including ICT, followed by audit function in the statutory bodies under the auspices of the ministry without the supervision of the internal audit unit. And then number seven, report of the chief executive of the audit, unit findings and follow up on issues raised. So it also has to function in following up, yeah, following up with the issues that is being raised up. Prepare the annual plan and annual report for the approval of the chief audit executive and last but not least to present the audit report on the financial management committee and accounts okay so this is uh, for internal audit this is for external audit we have one two three four five six seven eight okay we have eight uh, functions of external audit okay external audit is a periodic audit conducted by independent or external auditors refer to Auditor General or Head of the NAD. External audit aims to achieve high level of public accountability to fulfill the needs of the third party. Normally, it's been done in a yearly basis or annually. Okay, It covers the functions that include verifying accounting records, ensuring the compliance with proper and relevant guidelines and principles, determining whether the statements from the accounts have been prepared fairly, and the last one, have a direct responsibility to Yang Di Pertuan Agong. Yeah? Okay, class, now let's take a look at types of audit. So we have three types of auditing. Yeah? The first one is the financial audit followed by the compliance audit and also the performance audit. Okay, let's take a look at financial audit first. Okay, financial audit is also known as attestation audit. Aims to determine the true and fair view of annual financial statement and to ensure the extent of compliance with all accounting and auditing standards, rules and regulations. It involves obtaining and evaluating the evidence of financial reports, hence examining the reliability and integrity of the financial and operating information. It also includes determining whether accounting records have been maintained properly and up to date. This post audit is done on an annual basis. This is the standard one, yeah, financial audit. It's a general one. The outcome is expected to be distributed and made available to all stakeholder groups. Generally, financial audits include the practice in determining whether number one, financial info is presented accordance to reporting framework, number two, specific financial regulations have been adhered, and number three, the internal control structure relating to financial reporting and matters has been designed and implemented accordingly. So please remember these three things here. Yeah? Okay, how about the next one? Compliance audit. Okay, if the, the, if the first one is a standard one, so how about compliance audit? Okay, compliance audit represents the audit examination pertaining to the inspection and evaluation of the activities of ministries, departments, or other public sector organizations. 
So compliant is more is more to looking at the activities or projects that is being implemented by the ministry. Yeah? It involves the function of determining and examining evidence whether a financial and operating activity conforms to specified conditions, rules, and also regulations. By the by the title itself in which compliance you know already that compliance refers to something that to do with uh, rules and regulations and procedures yeah whether the activities that is already being implemented is following the set of rules that they are uh, they must follow something like that okay so this is the stage of pre-audit where internal procedures are used to control the accuracy of the collecting and recording revenues and incurring the and recording of expenditures and disbursements. It also reports on the probity of public funds dealing of a government entity. This audit is to be performed on cyclical basis, uh, cyclical, yeah. Hence, only selective activities will be audited. So, it is selective, yeah. The report will include either a summary of findings or the expression of assurance as to the degree of compliance with the specified criteria. So that is compliance audit. Meanwhile, for performance audit, based on the title itself, you already know that performance is the one that being evaluated from, uh, it is mostly from the activities that is already being implemented by the government so performance audit is an independent assessment or examination of the extent which an activity program or public institution operates efficiently and effectively with due regard to economy this audit involves evaluation of specified program or activities of ministries departments and other agencies with aims of determining whether the objectives are achieved and the resources used in a prudent, efficient, and effective manner. So how they are going to do it? I mean, how they are going to see the performance? Because um, every every program that is or uh, was already being implemented, um, they have a set of objectives, yeah, for each program. So how they are going to evaluate it? How they are going to evaluate the performance? It's always based on the set objectives. That is why, yeah, guys, uh, during your presentation, your uh, your group assignment and online presentation, I always emphasize that each program that you created, you need to have the objectives for the program itself. Because based on the objective, by then we know how to evaluate or um, give the outcomes, okay? So, um, in terms of the efficient efficiency and also whether the whether the program is uh, being well organized and then give give impact to the people that we want to target we need to see the objective so that we can come out with the outcome performance okay so this is clear yeah you can see it from here already objectives are very important to evaluate the performance it covers specified financial operation and full range of government activities, including both organizational and administrative systems, hence add value towards promoting better management practice. This audit support the fundamental basis of government spending of the three ES. Okay? Three E's. Okay, not ES, yeah, three E's. Uh, what are those three E's? The first one is economy. Second one is efficient and third one is the effectiveness, okay? Economy, efficient and effectiveness. The conduct and credibility of this audit can strengthen public governance through the assurance of accountability and the core values of government are protected. So these are the differences, yeah? Comparative summary of the different types of audit for financial type the nature of assertions entities financial report data 
Uh, meanwhile, for compliance, implicit claim that data adhere to the relevant policies, laws, and regulations because um, compliance auditing involves um, involves the project uh, that, that was being implemented, whether they follow certain or relevant policies, laws, and regulations that have been set by the government itself. And also performance, performance or operational data. For established criteria, for financial audit, it is an identified financial reporting framework. Compliance audit, management policies, laws, regulations, or other third-party requirements. Meanwhile, for performance audit, objective set, for example, by management or enabling legislation. So always remember objective is tally with the performance. Yeah? Without objective, they cannot do the evaluation of performance. So nature of auditor's report for financial audit, opinion on the fairness or truth and fairness of financial information. Meanwhile, for compliance audit, it is a summary or findings or assurance regarding degrees of compliance. And then last but not least, for performance audit, economy, efficiency, and effectiveness observed. Recommendations for improvement will also be explained, yeah? inside the findings. Alright class, now let's take a look at the role of Auditor General or what is actually Auditor General itself. Yeah? Okay. So the Auditor General or AG is appointed by Yang Di Pertuan Agong on the advice of Prime Minister after consultation with Conference of Rulers. He is eligible but not for any other appointment in the service of federal or state. AG may at any time resign but shall not be removed from the office except on the light grounds. His remuneration is provided by the parliament and charged on the consolidated fund. Article 98. Yeah? The terms and conditions of service of the AG shall be determined by the Yang Di Pertuan Agong subject to the provision of federal law. Okay, the role of Auditor General based on section 1, no, sorry, based, based on section 5, clause 1 of the Audit Act in 1957. So the role of AG is to examine, inquire, and audit the followings. So there are 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 5 points over here, yeah? Okay, the first point, the accounts of the Federation and the States. Secondly, the account of any separate fund established in a state or the federal territory under Article 97, Clause 3 of the Federal Constitution. Point number three, the accounts of any public authority or body so provided by law and where it is not provided by law at the request of that authority or body and with the consent of the Minister of Finance or MOF to be notified in the Gazette. Point number four, the accounts of any other body including a company registered under the Companies Act in receipt of public grant or loan and including also company where more than half of its paid up share capital is held by the Federation or the state or a public authority. Point number five, the accounts of any other public authority upon the request by the Minister of Finance in the interest of the public, yeah. So there are five important roles of AG. Okay, let's move on to the nature and scope of audit work. Nature and scope work of the AG include ascertaining and ensuring whether all reasonable precautions have been taken to safeguard the collection and custody of public money. Payment were made in accordance with proper authority, properly charged and supported by sufficient vouchers and proof of payments. Deal care has been taken into account to ensure proper use, control, maintenance and disposal of all public stores. All accounts and other reports have been and are properly and faithfully maintained. Monies have been applied accordingly for which they were appropriated or authorized and the related activities have been managed in an efficient manner with due regards for economy and avoidance of waste. The provisions of the 
Federal Constitution and of the FPA 1957 and any other written law have been complied with. Okay. So powers of Auditor General. Section 7 of the Audit Act in 1957 states that the AG has this following powers. So we have four points here. The first point, call upon any person for explanation and information. Okay, let's say the AG is not satisfied with whatever that he sees. So he has the power to call upon or summon any person for explanation and information to satisfy him. He has access to all records, vouchers, documents, cash, stamps, securities, and properties subject to his audit. Okay. Uh, point number three, delegate his powers by authorizing any person he deems competent to conduct an audit on his behalf. So he has the power to appoint anyone that he trusts to, to take the responsibility on behalf of himself. Yeah? And then point number four, obtain the advice of a law office upon any legal matters. Okay. So these four points are the main important roles or powers that an Auditor General has here yeah, upon public audit. Okay, annual report of the Auditor General. Common weaknesses identified in the Auditor General's report. Okay, there are one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, eight points here. Yeah. Okay, so the first one is overspending, second one, underspending, number three, additional spending, number four, delay in payments for supplies and goods, number five, stores and accounting assets not properly managed, number six, internal controls not sufficient where it concerns tax collection, number seven, management systems towards development projects was weak due to poor maintenance of vote book. Keeping. And then last but not least, failure of the warrant holder to submit complete monthly expenditure returns to the relevant officer. Okay, role of public accounts committee. So now we're moving on to the public accounts committee. Yeah? Public Accounts Committee is one of the Parliament Committee with the responsibility of being the parliamentary watchdog over public monies. Comprises between 6 to 14 members drawn from the major parties represented in the Parliament. This committee is empowered by the uh, First Clause Standing Order 77, Clause 5 of the Standing Ordinance and Clause 2, Section 10 of the House of Parliament Digest Powers Ordinance 1951. The Standing Order provides the PAC or Public Accounts Committee with the power to and responsibilities on the following matters. So there are four points yeah, under the following matters of responsibilities of PAC. The first point, the accounts of the federal government and the appropriation of the sums granted by Parliament to meet public expenditure. Point number two, such accounts of public authorities and other bodies administering public funds as may be laid before the House. Number three, reports of the Auditor General laid before the House. And number four, such other matters as the committee may think fit or which may be referred to the committee by the House. Okay, the last slide, the key functions of public account committee. Okay, so there are one, two, three, four, five, six, six key functions of public accounts committee. The first function is to ensure the money spent are in accordance with the purpose and program as approved in budget. Okay, so there is no overspending or underspending or so whatever. Yeah, so it has to be in accordance with the purpose and program as approved in the budget. Second function, to monitor that the public officials exercise the spending of money in the most effective and efficient manner. So no more wasting of money and waste, wasting of sources kind of uh, problem happen. Yeah? Number three, 
to maintain the high standard of accountability okay so this is straightforward number four to assist HOR in requiring into financial in inquiring into financial matters of the government to examine the auditor's report and last but not least to examine the individual program achieve its objective okay um, we need to say its performance the program's performance okay class so uh, we have come to an end of um, public accounting topic uh, sorry public auditing topic so um, please uh, do a revision on your own yeah and then i'm going to give you a tutorial task after this so um, that's all for today. Please uh, stay safe and take care.